Let's consider a deadly virus inside a glass that's growing exponentially. And that once the glass is full, the deadly virus will be completely uncontainable. If we start with one bacteria that doubles every minute, where at midnight the glass will be completely full, what time will it be when the glass is half full? The average person on the street guesses 11.30 p.m. Notice that for the first 55 minutes of the experiments, we don't see anything at all inside the glass. The deadly bacteria are too small. We don't recognize exponential growth because we can't see it. It's only at five minutes to midnight we notice anything. It isn't until one minute to midnight that we realize the glass is half full. But to our simplistic concrete minds, half full also means half empty. Even at this late stage, we see the problem as 50% removed. We don't recognize exponential growth as it's occurring. To identify the problem, we've added a curve to the bottom of the experiment. This line is called an asymptote. An asymptote is a curve on an X or Y axis that at some point shoots towards infinity. Once the curve hits the asymptote, it's too late to control. This chart also highlights the second challenge of man. We base our future expectations on our recent experience with the past. So when looking at this problem, we aren't looking at the exponential growth happening before our very eyes. We're looking at the first 95% of the experiment, expecting it to be the same. The mission of the Pandemic Emergency Board is to provide recommendations to deal with the major global challenges arising in response to an unfolding pandemic. We could be looking at double the number of cases in one week and 16 times as many in a month if we are not able to stop the spread. That would be on the order of half a million cases and it would continue to rise exponentially. In three months, we could be approaching 10 million cases. We're at the start of what's looking like it will be a severe pandemic. And there are problems emerging that can only be solved by global business and governments working together. We have known about caps-like viruses in animals and people for decades, but have not been successful at developing a licensed vaccine. And sure, there are new technologies that may help, but it's going to be difficult I am not optimistic about having a vaccine in time to be relevant during this pandemic. So the policy crisis in question for this board in this meeting is this. How should governments, business, and international organizations allocate and distribute pandemic antivirals and medical supplies to the people who need them most? What we've seen work uh, very well in the HIV field is in fact procurement through the Global Fund. So having a centralized mechanism, so financial, financially able to procure on behalf of affected countries okay. would be critical. I think the second thing, the second thing is um, it's going to be very important that for the business sector, for manufacturers of anti antivirals, that we have clarity around what the need is and where the need is and who are making the decisions. I think that given that uh, the countries most affected are those that are low and middle income countries with unequal access to technology, to, to finances. Uh, the UN has a, a worldwide uh, footprint, universally uh, recognized and uh, universal membership. A global stockpile would certainly help ensure more rational and strategic allocation, but the reality is that we don't have the logistics capability, even within the UN, to bring that together in one place and run it. So this is where I think a collaboration 
between the international organizations like the World Health Organization and the private sector, which runs these supply chains for many purposes every day. Understand where the supplies are, make smart decisions about how to allocate them to the people who need them in the places that need them the most, and then work with the industry to move those supplies from where they are today to where they need to be. Just to underscore the point that cooperation among supply chain providers or businesses that have huge supply chains mm -hmm. can add a lot of efficiency to the whole process. The question is, can you, through this international mechanism, really promote commitments to doing this as quickly as possible and give people a sense that actually if they contribute more, that they will have a, a better chance of protecting their own populations and their country's security and health. Public health agencies have issued travel advisories, while some countries have banned travel from the worst affected areas. As a result, the travel sector is taking a huge hit. Travel bookings are down 45% and many flights have been canceled. A ripple effect is racing through the service sector. Governments that rely on travel and tourism as a large part of their economies are being hit particularly hard. How should national leaders, businesses and international organizations balance the risk of worsening disease that would be caused by the continued movement of people around the world against the risks of profound economic consequence of travel and trade bans. Countries are reacting in different ways as to how best to manage the overwhelming amounts of dis and misinformation circulating over the internet. In some cases, Limited internet shutdowns are being implemented to quell panic. The outcome of the CAPS pandemic in Event 201 was catastrophic. 65 million people died in the first 18 months. The outbreak was small at first and initially seemed controllable, but then it started spreading in densely crowded and impoverished neighborhoods of megacities. From that point on, the spread of the disease was explosive. Within six months, cases were occurring in nearly every country. The global economy was in a free fall. The GDP down 11 percent. Stock markets around the world plummeted between 20 and 40 percent and headed into a downward cycle of fear and low expectation. Businesses were not borrowing. Banks were not lending. Everyone was just hoping to hunker down and weather the storm. Economists say the economic turmoil caused by such a pandemic will last for years, perhaps a decade. The societal impacts, the loss of faith in government, the distrust of news, and the breakdown of social cohesion could last even longer. We have to ask, did this need to be so bad? Are there things we could have done in the five to 10 years leading up to the pandemic that would have lessened the catastrophic consequences? We believe the answer is yes. So are we as a global community now finally ready to do the hard work needed to prepare for the next pandemic?